chapter 15, Chromosomal Basis of Inheritance. Now keep in mind, during Mendel's time in the 1860s, there was no knowledge of chromosomes, no knowledge of DNA. They hadn't even studied meiosis yet. So around the turn of the century, cell biologists were studying cell division, and around 1900 or so, they rediscovered Mendel's work because they saw that chromosomes were behaving in much the same manner that Mendel said that genes were behaving. So his Mendel's uh, laws of segregation independent assortment were rediscovered around 1900. Now uh, T.H. Morgan did a lot of work with fruit flies, Drosophila fruit flies, uh, and he discovered quite a bit. Now the chromosomal theory of inheritance is that our alleles are residing on our chromosomes. Here on the board I have a drawing of two pairs of homologous chromosomes, a big pair and a small pair. Now the R genes and the Y genes assort independently because the chromosomes assort independently. Remember we stuck, talked about that with meiosis. But we have far more genes than we have chromosomes. Okay, So suppose we have another gene located on the same chromosome as R. Now what Morgan discovered was that some genes are linked. Linked genes are genes located on the same chromosomes. Now, linked genes are not going to assort independently. They tend to come as a, a match set. They tend to come as a package deal. Okay, So in this case, the big R allele and the big A allele are on the same chromosome. Now, the other alleles are on the other homologous chromosome, but they're linked, see? So the chromosomal theory of inheritance is that our alleles reside on our chromosomes. Our alleles are paired just like our chromosomes are paired, because that's where they are. So linked genes do not show independent assortment. Unlinked genes do. So Mendel's law of independent assortment only applies to unlinked genes. Roman numeral 2. We talk about genetic recombination a little bit. Now, remember genetic recombination. We talked about this with the meiosis chapter. Independent assortment lends to genetic variation. So, the way to get recombination of unlinked genes, in this case the R's and the Y's, is simply by independent assortment. So in other words, you can get a big R and a little Y in a gamete. Okay? But the only way to get genetic recombination of linked genes is by having a crossover event switching out the chromosomes. So you can get recombination of linked genes through crossovers. Okay? Now, this crossover information can be used in gene mapping. Okay? Now the book goes into a lot of details on gene mapping and all I want you to know is basically is that crossover information is used in gene mapping. So first of all, you can find out if two alleles are on the same chromosome just to, because they don't give you a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 uh, ratio. Okay, they're, uh, they're, they're linked. But the crossovers themselves give you information on how close or how far apart the chromosomes are, or the, the, the alleles are on the same chromosome. So logic would dictate that if this was random, the farther apart the genes are on the chromosome, the more likely you are to have a crossover event between them. The closer they are, the less likely. So you look at the offspring, the percent of offspring showing genetic recombination of linked genes is equal to MAP units. So if crossovers occur at 10% of the offspring, then you'd say those two genes are 10 MAP units apart. So that's gene mapping and crossover data. Roman numeral four, we talk about sex chromosomes and sex-linked inheritance. Now on page 290, figure 15.6a, remember, sex chromosomes. For humans, we have what's called the XY system. XX for female, XY for male. Males are the ones with the two different sex chromosomes, heterogametic. Okay? That's how it is pretty much throughout the mammals. Now for chickens, it's the opposite. They have what's called the ZW system, in which case the female is heterogametic and the male chicken is the one with the two uh, chromosomes that are the same. Now bees are even more bizarre in that you have what's called haplodiploidy. 
a fertilized egg is diploid and becomes a female. An unfertilized egg in a bee becomes a male, which is haploid. So that's the sex determination system in bees. So it's not the same in all organisms, but we can look at the XY system in a Punnett square. Because after all, it is the chromosomes that we're inheriting. So if we're going to track the, the chromosomes on a Punnett square, We'll put mom here, separate the two X's, we'll put dad here, X and Y. Well, if this sperm fertilizes that egg, baby girl. If this sperm fertilizes that egg, baby girl. If that sperm fertilizes that egg, baby boy. And if this one fertilizes that one, baby boy. What's the ratio? 50-50, okay? All right. Now, it just so happens that in females, one X chromosome remains active in the cell and the other one actually degenerates and forms what's called a bar body. Okay? So a bar body is an extra X chromosome that deactivates and sits as a little spot in the nucleus. The male does not have the extra X chromosome, therefore wouldn't have a bar body. Okay? This is best seen with tortoiseshell and calico cats, which are female. It just so happens that one color is carried on one X chromosome, the other color is carried on the other X chromosome. The cells in which that chromosome is active is going to display one color. The other cells where the other X is displayed is going to show another color. Okay? Female calico cats. This brings us all the way to Roman numeral 5 in our notes chromosomal alterations. Now, there's two ways to alter chromosomes. You can alter their numbers or you can alter their structure. Now, the way to alter the chromosome number is to have, well, is to have a mistake in meiosis called non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is a failure of chromosomes to separate during meiosis. This can happen in meiosis 1 or meiosis 2. This can result in a gamete having an extra chromosome or is missing one. Okay? Page 297 shows you the process of non-disjunction in meiosis. You need to look at that, figure 15.13. So, aneuploidy is a condition of having an abnormal number of a certain chromosome. For example, uh, if they have three number 21 chromosomes, that's called trisomy 21, which is a major cause of Down syndrome. That's called an aneuploidy. But if you have more than two complete sets of chromosomes, that's called polyploidy. Now, polyploidy is very rare in the animal kingdom, but it is literally common as dirt in plants. Plants are apparently are okay with having uh, multiple sets of chromosomes, being tetra tetraploid, pentaploid, triploid, whatever. So those are alterations of chromosome number caused by non-disjunction. Alterations in chromosome structure is also caused by not non-disjunction, but breaking of chromosomes or fragile chromosomes. Um, a chromosome piece could be lost. That could be called a deletion. That chromosome could be added to a, a, another homologous chromosome. That's called a duplication. Okay. Or that piece could be attached to a non-homologous chromosome, in which case that's called a translocation. So alterations of chromosome structure include deletions, duplications, and translocations. And this can happen with chromosome breakage or crossover mistakes. Now, in our notes under C, I have chromosomal alterations in humans. Examples of aneuploids. Uh, Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Uh, now, Down syndrome happens to be the most common autosomal trisomy because they're the ones who survive. Uh, trisomy 13 and trisomy 18, uh, Patau and Edwards syndrome respectively, if they survive birth, they usually die in infancy. Now, sex chromosome aneuploids can include Klinefelter syndrome, XXY, male, extra Y syndrome, XYY, Metafemale, XXX, or Turner syndrome, XO, having just an X chromosome and no second sex chromosome. Now, you can read in your notes about the characteristics here, but if you want to put this together with other information, for example, a person with Klinefelter syndrome would be male because they have a Y chromosome, but they have an extra X, which means they also have a bar body. Likewise, a Turner syndrome is female 
because she does not have the Y chromosome, but she only has one X chromosome, so she would not have a bar body. So you see how that goes together. Examples of deletions in humans is Cri-Ducas syndrome. It's French for cry of the cat. Um, translocations, there's a form of uh, leukemia that's caused by translocation. And there are a few cases of Down syndrome that are caused by translocations instead of trisomy 21. And that concludes chapter 15. Make sure you go through your chapter in the pictures of, uh, that your notes refer you to and go over your notes as much as you can.